Hi, my name is Mike, and today I'm going to be unboxing a Dell Power Edge R6515. Now, I've had a, a, I have a few servers that I use for my business, uh, and one of them has been in production now for eight or nine years. Uh, and a few months ago, I was running into some things that I was needing to, to do on the server, and it just wasn't fast enough to actually get it done in the amount of time that I needed to have it done in. So uh, I figured this would be a good time to start looking for, for something new. And this is the server that I settled on. Um, this is, uh, it's, it came out maybe last month. Dell uh, is making use of AMD's new Epic 2 chips, the, the Rome CPUs. Uh, and I thought, you know what, that I was really impressed with the performance they were getting out of those CPUs. And I really like uh, Dell PowerEdge servers. I've used them for several years now and they've never let me down. So I thought, you know what, this is gonna be a great combination. So let's get started. Now the first thing I noticed about this box is it has double corrugated cardboard and so it's really freaking sturdy. Um, which is nice because when you're buying something that's uh, that's a server that's kind of sensitive both to vibration and, and something that you're investing a lot in, then, then that's a good thing. Um, it's worth noting I did not order a lot of uh, a, a lot of extras with the server. I did not want to keep uh, I, did, I did not want to have CDs for Open Manage and other software like that, um, just because you can always download that stuff from, from their website. Uh, and once you get this, the disks there, it's probably an older version already. So um, it looks like up on the top here is the rails. And so, yeah, let's, let's uh, slide these out. I ordered the rails without the cable management arm, um, just because usually, like, I don't, uh, the cam I've, I've tried installing cable management arms in the past, and usually it's more trouble than it's worth. It's just it's so hard to get a line just right, and it ends up being a mess. Um, and so I found it easier just to do the cable management using the rack itself, and uh, and to let the rails just be rails. And so it looks like they have a couple of um, Velcro ties, which is kind of nice to kind of uh, keep the, the cables... Uh, somewhat organized even though there's there's not a cable management arm um, and then it looks like there's some screws here just uh, hardware the rails themselves are here um, power edge rails if you've never used them before are actually really convenient they're very easy to install um, they kind of have spring clip to, to uh, clip into a square post rack and uh, and really, uh, it's one of the nicer uh, uh, rail systems that I've used to, to install servers. So um, totally recommend them. And, and they're actually pretty reasonably heavy. So uh, and still is confidence that they'll actually hold the server. Um, they are sliding rails since uh, you want to be able to slide out the the server. Sometimes when you're doing like a memory upgrade or something like that, you don't want to have to unmount the whole server uh, just to have it unlatch and slide out to do a quick memory upgrade or or to upgrade something inside um, or replace a broken fan or something. If that ever happens, uh, then that's really convenient. So uh, otherwise, nothing else really in in this part portion of it. Uh, let's open this level. Uh, looks like we have a power cord. I believe this is a 10 foot power cord and it's pretty heavy duty. Um, so that's, that's nice. That should be good. Um, it does look like it has some, uh, uh, just some getting started, um, documentation and so forth. Um, so that should be helpful when I'm actually getting it going. Put that over here. And what's this? Oh, this is the, um, uh, it's a, the key and the bezel. Uh, so I did order a bezel, um, and the reason for that is that um, I wanted. Uh, this is going to be at a data center that that I'm I'm not in control of, and uh, basically this covers uh, it protects the server from somebody bumping into the power button or something. Some reason that maybe they accidentally pop a disk or something like that, uh, and I really don't want that to happen. And so this is just like a real 
I mean, it's aesthetic, but uh, the reason I purchased it is because I I didn't uh, I wanted to give it some some protection from getting uh, bumped and have something happen to the server that uh, would cost me some time uh, administrating it. Uh, let's see here. So then you have this top layer. Pull this off. Get rid of that. And then down below, uh, it's really well packed with foam. Uh, so this is great. It uh, looks like you can just pull this out. Um, really solid. And it looks like it hasn't gone anywhere. Um, yeah, and, it, and so this is a 1U single socket um, uh, server. And the place that I'm hosting it at only, it supports dual power supplies, redundant power, but the place I'm hosting it at only it offers me a single power uh, connection. So uh, I just ordered it with a single power supply. Um, but it is hot swap, and I've never had a power supply die on me before, so uh, I'm gonna uh, knock on wood and, and, and say that that won't happen here. Um, let's see here. Uh, the server's pretty, pretty beefy, it's kind of heavy. Uh, I would expect. Uh, so, um, yeah, it looks, as you can see it here, and yeah, I mean, I, I ordered it with two SSDs, um, and I just ordered, it. so the thing that with, with Dell is that their, their memory and their uh, discs, the amount they charge for them is really high, um, which is great if you're a, a, an enterprise, if you're a company, that needs to have that support and and wants everything to be covered. If anything fails, they want to be able to call up Dell and be like, "Hey, get, get out here and fix it." Uh, but for me, uh, it's it's something where since I have a small business, um, I just can't afford it. So uh, basically, I ordered it with uh, two SSDs just to have a pair, and this will be uh, for VMware to boot off of. I'll have boot off of this. These are two hundred forty gig SSDs. Um, and then I'm going to be ordering three more um, Intel, it's, they're the S4510 uh, uh, drives, and they're, they're 1.92 gigabyte or 1.92 terabyte SSDs. And so I'm planning to use those in a RAID 5. Uh, so I will populate the rest of those here. Uh, looks like there's a small card or something that comes out. I think that just has like the serial number and stuff on it. Um, it has a USB and I think this US, the smaller USB ports for the iDRAC on the front. On the other side, I believe there's a like, where am I, where am I looking here? So these are for to latch the rails. Um, oh, here's the, the VGA port to connect a monitor from the front. Usually I, I in my rack at home, I connect from uh, the rear to, to uh, the monitor and keyboard mouse and so forth. Where this is going to be hosting, actually, I'll probably use the rear port as well. So let's turn this over. And uh, on the sides, I mean, it's just it's a 1U server. And on the back here, uh, we have a serial port, VGA port. Uh, this is, I got the... the uh, iDRAC, I, I upgraded to the iDRAC Enterprise um, just because that gives me a remote KVM and I can have console access uh, from out remotely. Um, and that's really key for me because I'd rather not have to, to travel to where this is being uh, hosted and, uh, and do any, any uh, changes or, or if something freezes up, I can always get to it using this iDRAC uh, and, and reboot it or something. Um, there's also two gigabit ports. Um, I don't need any more than that. Um, they have additional cards you can buy that's like a, um, a, a card that's like a, I'm trying to remember what it's called, LAN on motherboard, a LOM card, um, to add additional ports if you need it, but uh, I didn't need it. Uh, and there's a couple of PCI slots, and again, you have the, I have a single power supply, uh, the second one I'm not using. There, I didn't get a redundant power. So, I cleared it out of the box, uh, let's, let's pop it open, uh, and take a look. Uh, the first thing I try to do is, it, it, to unlatch this, is just to pull it up, but there's actually an additional screw here that's not on any of my previous PowerEdge servers that I've, I've had experience with, that kind of locks it in place. You have to turn that to kind of unlock it, then pop this up, and this will slide apart. Um, so let's put that on the side. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. Um, let's see, we got 
Looks like there's six fans across the front here. Um, and then the hard drives and stuff go go up here. Uh, this is the model. There's there's models that hold either four uh, three and a half inch drives, or this one is the uh, eight uh, two and a half inch drives. There's also another one that has ten two and a half inch drives with NVMe drives as well. Um, I decided uh, for this this server, I was just going to stick with um, SATA and SAS uh, SSDs. And so I'm not, I decided let, to save some money and go for the eight bay uh, version. Um, back here, the power supplies, you got a couple of risers for uh, PCI card slots. I ordered this, this is the um, H740P, um, the RAID card. It has eight gigabytes of, uh, of battery back cache on it. Now with SSD RAID, I don't actually, I'm not gonna use that for a, a write cache, but I will definitely use that for read caching. And so that should uh, improve performance there. Um, again, and so this will uh, uh, connect to the drives up in the front. You can see the cable going, going up here and, and routing through. Uh, this is the CPU. Um, I'm trying to remember, I think it's the, uh, the 7302P is the one I went for. And I, again, I ordered it with just eight, the lowest amount of memory. I think there's an uh, eight gig in there and I'm, I'm ordering a separate memory from, from Crucial um, to, to use in this. Um, it has 16 uh, DIMM slots in it. And so at the, I believe it supports up to like, I don't know if it's a one and a half or two terabytes of, of memory. Um, I'm thinking, yeah, I believe it's it might be two terabytes uh, if you use 128 gigabyte uh, LR DIMMs, uh, then then and fill up the slots and you can do two terabytes. Um, I'm only gonna be using only gonna be using 128 gigs. I, I'm ordering uh, four 32 gig sticks. Now, this CPU actually does eight channel memory, uh, and and so you it's faster if you actually have eight dims in there at the same time um, of the same type uh, but in this instance i decided that i was i wanted to leave my options open for later on and so oh it's uh memory prices continue to come down and if i want to uh, quickly get uh, more memory uh if you add more than eight dims like there's 16 slots if, if you use more than eight though it bumps down the speed of memory from the 3200 uh, uh transactions to or mega transactions to 2966 i believe so i decided you know what i'll keep my options open i'll i'll buy four 32 gig dims uh with and then leave it open i can also do four four more later on um if that needs arises. So, so yeah, that's, um, that's basically all there is right now. Um, there's some thing slots here that I, I didn't, uh, use. There's a slot for, uh, the boot optimized storage system, the boss cards. Um, and that basically it's a card that with two M2, uh, slots on it, uh, for a boot device. And I say, you know what, I'm just going to use the SSDs that, that it comes with in front. I still have plenty of, uh, of, uh, of um, slots there if I if I need to upgrade in the future, um, and so I have two for the boot, three for a RAID five uh, with a, about three and a half to four terabytes of usable space, and then I'll have three slots remaining uh, for another RAID five if I need uh, if I run out of storage and, and need more. So um, again, this is I I, I appreciate uh, you watching and. Uh, Thank, and I will probably post more videos as time goes on uh, when when I actually get this configured out the, the way that I'm going to have for the final spec uh, before moving into the data center. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.